Sometimes we need to change something, but we only want to change one of them. And we've been using our paragraph selectors throughout this course, so we'll keep on going with that. And we'll say color is red, just so we can, I, I like using red because it stands out and it's pretty obvious that it's changed. Uh, and we can see all of my paragraphs have changed over to red. But what if I don't want all of them to be red? I only want one of them to be red. And to be able to do that, we can't use our regular element selectors because an element selector will select every instance of that element on the page. Instead, we have to use something called a class, or there's also IDs, which we're going to be talking about as well. But we're gonna start with classes. And for a class, it's an attribute the same way our source or our href are. So if we come back over here, we had links where we're using an href. Uh, we also had the images that have an SRC. The difference with these ones that are specific, like an SRC, we need to have one on our image, our alt type, our, as well as our alt uh, as well. Whereas a link has to have an href on it. A paragraph, a heading, a section, a main, all of these elements don't require an attribute for them to work, but we can add optional ones to them. And classes are one of those optional ones we can use. And you can also use these on images and links and other things as well. And so to highlight this, let's go into here, what is bouldering? And I'm gonna put a class on the first paragraph here. So the first paragraph is this one. And just like any other attribute, we put a space after the element, and then we write in the word class. And we do equals to, and we need our quotation marks right there. And then we can come in with the name that we want. And in this case, unlike where we had to link to something like with our SRC or our href, with the class, you're going to create your own name. So I'm gonna come in with, I'm just gonna call it accent, because I want this paragraph to stand out. It's gonna be an accent, you know, it's gonna be brighter and stand out from everything else. So I'm gonna save this right here and go back to my styles. And instead of having all of my paragraphs read, I only want my class of accent to be read. And so I wanna select my class of accent. And to be able to select classes, instead of writing the element name, we can't just put in accent like this because that would look for an element of accent, which doesn't exist. So instead of writing just like this, at the very beginning of it, I'm gonna put a dot or a period or whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> but we put the dot right there at the beginning. We're saying it's a class of accent. So if I save this and I go back and refresh, we can see that now only my first paragraph is red and all the other ones have stayed black. And a nice thing that we can do with classes is they're not unique. We can reuse them as many times as we want. So if I have an accent class like that, I can take that one and I can go and bring it onto another paragraph. Class is equal to accent. And if I refresh over here, it's going to work and we can see this one and this one are both getting that red color on there. And it's not unique to paragraphs either. I could use this on my link or I could use it on a heading. And that same class is going to work no matter where I'm using it and apply the color that I've said to that element. Now there's another type of special selector that we have, which is an ID selector. So here on my, uh, so let's go down to this Y bouldering section. So we're somewhere different. And I'm gonna go on the first paragraph here. And instead of a class, it's an ID is equal to. And in this case, let's give it an ID of first paragraph, because it's sort of what it is, right? It's the first paragraph of this section. Uh, and then we can go over to my style here. And to select the first paragraph, of that section, <laughs> the, my, that ID that I've created, instead of doing it with a dot, because a dot is for your class, I would use a hashtag. And the hashtag or the pound symbol is to select IDs. So then I would do first paragraph. And let's say color is green and the font size is bigger too. Font size is, I don't know, 1.5 rem to make it larger than the other one. And now we can see that that is being applied to this one right here. And I've made a mistake in that and I didn't realize it until now either. Ah, I added an extra paragraph here and I don't know why I did that. I must have just seen a line break. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Cool. I saw an awkward thing earlier on and I didn't click in that I'd created two paragraphs there. Uh, so with the color change, it became very evident. So there we go. I have uh, that paragraph coming in that is different and it's my first paragraph. So. Of course, this raises the question, when should I use an ID or a class or which one should I use in what situation? And there's a couple of very big differences between classes and IDs, one of which we'll talk about in an upcoming lesson. But the important thing to know for now is, well, classes are reusable. We have that red being reused wherever we want it. IDs aren't meant to be reused. ID is something that's unique to that element. So you're only supposed to use an ID once on a page. Now you might have a website with 30 pages in it. You can reuse that ID across all 30 pages, but on each individual page, you can only use that ID one time. 
And the way I like to remember this is that I think of it, uh, the analogy I usually give is a classroom or at a school, right? You have a school and there's all the people inside. So the people, you want to just say like everybody in the school, those would be the element selectors. You did your your people. <laughs> it's, just, it's everybody that's there. And then within those people, you have different roles. You have the administration, you have the teachers, you have the janitorial staff and other staff members and things like that, the secretarial staff. So those would be like the classes because the teachers is... A subset of the people so it's like your element selector is everybody and then we're saying that this group of people within that so it's all the, that this class of people if you want to call it a class uh, is your teachers or is your students and these other things so we're sort of separating them and they have their own unique styling or things about them and then you have the ID would be the individual person right every single individual there is someone who's different and nobody shares the same ID between each other they're not they're not the same person right so each we have all the individuals as well so the same thing with classes and IDs there is the class is reusable we can sort of generalize and make groups of things that share these same properties whereas an ID is something that's unique in only once per page and as far as how to know which one to use, I would just say use either an element selector if you need to just select all your, I don't know, sections, or you need to select all your H2s or something like that. The element selector is probably the better one. And then if you do need to overwrite some styling or do something specific somewhere, then I would use a class selector. And the reason for that is you might only want to change one of your paragraphs to be an accent paragraph. But then later on, you need a second one or a third one or a fourth one. And then if it was an ID, you have to change it from an ID to a class and change your styling and your CSS and all of that. And it's not worth it. Uh, there's other drawbacks to using IDs as well, which again, we'll talk about in a future lesson. But just that concept that class selectors, you can have a class and only use it once on a page if you want to, but you're able to use it more times. It just makes it a little bit more versatile and useful in the long run. And so in general, in front end development these days, it's considered best practice to either have element selectors and class selectors and to generally avoid ID selectors.